Concerning Valken of Bryn. On a peaceful farmstead was Valken born. To a warrior and a cook. His father, Valbrin, Jarl of the Lands. He loved bread, you see. And that's how he met his wife, who would become Valken's mother. The two of them fell in love, and they conceived Valken and his brother Valmor, amongst other siblings. No one really truly knows how many uh, Val seem to have taken to bed, so to speak. But there's quite a large amount of siblings and other kin. The Bryn family itself was quite prosperous. The Yaldum was, uh, was something that they took great joy in, and they flocked many to the banner. Falcon has a, as a result, has a love of finer things, love of good foods. The young man himself was often drawn to the woods, and enjoys the good of exploration, forging, the hunt. Something about the outdoors that is always called the Falcon. But it's by his stomach that his adventures were always triggered. The Falcon will, uh, Go up any mountain and cross any river and partake in any raid if it leads to uh, the finer things when it comes to the culinary arts, so to speak. His stomach is a trainer of most of his adventures. Often it was the things that interest him the most, and that and some of the slave girls in the kitchen. His mother's sweet sound in the voice was uh, a very common thing that he heard in the kitchens. It brought great joy to him. It often kept him lingering around, being around uh, one that he loved so dear, and the pleasing sight of the other girls around, of course. But because of his, um, let's say, intuitive nature around the kitchen, he learned quite a bit how to work with the different implements and ingredients, things like that. And it was uh, this, this passion and desire to create and taste good things and of course, have a very full belly that has brought him down his path as a cook. Quite an experienced one in the area. And being a son of a Jarl, he had all the opportunity to work with any of the ingredients that he could. Though, of course, you, you know, Jarl Val would uh, not always like to uh, see his, one of his sons doing uh, women's work, so to speak. And so, oftentimes, the Jarl would come in and take a, take a stick and swing it around and Try to beat Valken out of the kitchen, or so to speak, but uh, Valken always seemed to find a way back in. He uh, took up different uh, missions, so to speak, hunting game, going out quite often, more often than some would find necessary, even if it was just to find a single deer. His ego was in his in his stomach, as I've shared always drove him to go deeper and deeper to find more and more game as uh, being able to provide food for the table and be good with the bow seemed to bring bring good reputation and stock amongst his father and some of the other men. Of course, uh, a good meal is a way to a man's heart, so to speak. And Valken knew how to uh, sway the, uh, the uh, distasteful things from his father's mind, so to speak. There was one such adventure where uh, Valken's tummy was, uh, well... It drew him back into the woods once more. He had a craving for something that could only be found in the woods itself. Uh, spice, and of course he needed a, uh, a rack of uh, deer ribs as well. So he brought along his bow and went for the great hunt. And it wasn't long that he uh, got turned around somehow. The woods had been uh, something that he'd spent lots of time in, but somehow he'd taken a wrong turn, traversed the wrong way. Um, he had seen a great elk and had pursued it for some time. Normally, he'd always found himself back into familiar territory, but this this time was different. Three days passed, filled with rain, muck, and a loss of hope toward finding his home. And as he tried to find his way back, he started crawling over rocks, wandered over the rivers, and eventually he was so tired that he just sat down. Quite a young man, uh, Having found himself in quite poor sorts, he started to doze off. But he awoke to the sound of rustling, to noises, and to shouts in the distance. 
As he heard the rustling noises, he figured, oh, perhaps someone had uh, come to, to save him. Maybe they had realized that uh, he couldn't find his way home, and so his father sent out others to come see him. The voices seemed familiar in the distance, but the rustling seemed to be much closer than before. It wasn't until he heard the growling of the great wolf that he realized he was in trouble. You see, as he began to cling and try to find his bow and the arrows that were accompanying with it, a wolf emerged from the bushes, growling, appearing hungry, almost, almost deranged, foaming at the mouth. This wolf began to run at him. Falcon, in his uh, composed state, drew his bow, but he missed the, the beast entirely. And it wasn't until the wolf was all on him that the voices seemed to grow louder and louder and louder. These ones being of Eula and Sabin, who were good friends. They were servant children that worked around the Yaldum. And the voice of his brother Valken, Valmor, also was heard. Still, it was uh, quite the fight. Valken himself was uh, brought to near death. Several scars along his body, one along the side of his head. These would be permanent reminders of this time. Somehow, the... Uh, Teens and children managed to, uh, to save Valken's life that day with their bows and their swords and bring them back into the family. And as is custom, another brother and sister were added to the family for saving Valken's life, of course. Valmor seemed to grumble to himself and has always been good to remind Valken of uh, not differing too far into the woods. Seems to be a slight of theirs that uh, Valmor is a more successful woodsman than Valken can be. At least in keeping to himself and staying alive. Valken always seems to find himself in some type of trouble, which is why he prefers the safety of the kitchen. Though, still, one had to go hunt game, and that did not stop Valken from venturing out, but he always seemed fit to try to bring a, a sibling or two with him. That's been a common theme for him. Staying close to each other, his new brother and sister adopted have became almost guardians of sorts. A sense of great protection. He and he himself liked to make sure that he took good care of them as well. But it always seemed that one of the brothers and sisters was more experienced in the woods than he was. So he started to train not with the bow, but with the instruments of blunt nice old mace that uh, his father had used as a boy. Kind of a lighter version of the one that the adults would use. In his adult age, a great time of suffering came upon the people. Many would call it Ragnarok. <laughs> oh, pardon me. It is uh, quite cold in here. Perhaps you could uh, put another, another piece of wood on the fire for me, young one. There is still more to this story that you uh, that you should hear. You see, during Ragnarok, there is a great deal of suffering and turmoil. The gods themselves doing battle with one another, and some even being killed and slain. But what that did to those of us here in the realm? Parents, children, families, entire cities, countrymen, everything lost, destroyed. They, the Bryn family was... Uh, they were not spared this as well. Ragnarok took their parents, siblings, friends, the Yaldum itself, the farm, everything. Everything was lost. And as the waters began to rise, the fires, the snows, the storms, everything imaginable had occurred. Over their small little plot of farmland, it seemed that a great flood was just continuing to consume the whole area. The remaining siblings that were left made it to an old hunting lodge along with some servants and villagers and any of manner of folk that were still alive to tell the tale. They all met, got into the small, small carve, and drifted out into sea the best they could to stay alive, hoping to find land, find a place of safety. It had not even been a full day when the ship was hit by a sudden wave, a great wave, this has all happened before the sun had fully set. Waves as tall as the mass appeared out of nowhere, leaving everyone aboard surprised, in awe, as most would have been weary and had thought for once they had gotten respite. As this wave came over them, 
A great storm followed, which tore the board apart. It scattered each and every person on board. I know this because I was there. I was a part of these encounters, so to speak. It scattered many, and killing some that remained. As for young Falcon, he'd, he'd been at sea from the beginning, but his body was flown from the boat, and he found himself attached to a barrel of some kind. It, it had been five days, at least that's what he told me. It had been five days since the story of Kong. His breath was weak, and alone he was unable to feel his arms or his fingers as they gripped the barrel. That barrel, that piece of life-saving debris. And Falcon told me that uh, he started to realize his foolishness and stupidity. That death had come near him, and he realized how petty he had been in life. And he prayed. He prayed these words. He said these words. Gods, hear me. I come to you now. Valhalla awaits me. Quite eerie they were. But that's what he said he spoke. I never knew him to be a man of faith, of course. These words, as they left Valken's lips in a whisper, as he loosened, he started to loosen his grip from the barrel. Like as if his life force, that prayer was the last glimpse of hope that he could could give out. Before he, his body fell from the barrel, and he started to float in the water as most bodies do. He thought to himself that he couldn't do much more. He was unable to move, and started to think his final thoughts, not knowing if he would see Valhalla see his parents or his siblings, his enemies, or even a single one of the gods, whom he had not seen in his entire lifetime, became lost in unconsciousness. And is there something strange happened? A bubble, an aura of some kind, formed around him, around this floating woodsman, its edges forming all around him as a protective shield, and inside started to breathe life into the man. Its aura, its energy, its life force. It was like like something was feeding life right into this this young man who was at the end of death. Valcom described it much like being in his mother's room. Something that I have no memory about, but Valcom himself seems to claim that he remembers being inside his mother's room, hearing the sweet sound of her voice and the singing. Inside this bubble, this sphere, that's when Valken felt warmth trying to enter his skin. That's when Valken felt the warmth trying to enter his flesh. That's when Valken felt the warmth trying to enter his bones. That's when Valken felt the warmth entering his soul. Valken's ear then began to hear something safe and sound inside this bubble he heard a soft humming the humming sound of his mother at least he he told me that it was his mother though one cannot always be too sure of these things he heard his late mother sing though she had died Valken swore to me that he heard her voice singing to him while he rested but where was he resting was he still in the bubble, or was he resting inside her? His feelings and thoughts seemed to confuse him, as his knowledge and memories of life, and his memories of being a small little baby infant, conflicted with each other. Valken didn't know how much time had passed. Didn't really know where he was or what was going on. What I know, though, is that in reality, the gods saw fit to pluck Valken from the great ocean, protecting him from the rest of the remaining parts of Ragnarok, and delivering to a lost place, a place unknown to him and 
at the time unknown to me as well. A strange land, but a land that was much safer than the place that Ragnarok had, had claimed. Though this land had many creatures, it was barren and untamed, and perhaps Valken would find new life here. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. After all, the family motto is this. What happens here today stays.